My guest is engineer producer Mark Needham. And in lieu of trying to list your credits, because not only are there so many of them, but they're all over the map, what's your own musical background? I was a guitar player starting probably eight or nine years old. Um, and I played some drums and percussion when I got this, when I moved to San Francisco, I moved there pretty young. We started a music school there, rock music school, but there were so many guitar players, it was really hard to find a gig that could actually pay. I'm trying to eat, you know? So I ended up playing drums in a, in a funk cover band. I've always had a pr pretty broad taste in music since I was really young. My, my sister was a big part of that. You know, she really, she was five years older than me. And my dad listened to a lot of country music um, growing up. I, I had an uncle who played, um, who was quite the accordion player. Um, so, you know, I'd, I'd always had pretty broad taste, and I, I still do. I, you know, I find, it, I find it really interesting to get off into different styles of music. And I produced, you know, I used to be a jazz producer for, for a while. Uh, I, you know, I started my career recording ragtime acoustic guitar solo records, you know. <laughs> it's, but, uh, I mean, I like anything that, that you know... I, I love, I just love music, so. And that also, I think, probably helps you not fall into certain traps, too. Uh, you know, that's one reason that we, uh, I would say we, my company, uh, you know, that I focus, I focus a lot on developing bands. Um, because if you're, you know, working with labels or you have a hit in one genre, um, then everybody just assumes that you, I mean, I remember when I first, I, we, when Wicked Gay with Chris Isaac, when that finally blew up and became like sort of a hit, and people got what we'd been doing with that band for a few years, and then you know everybody who comes to you wants that sound again. It's right. like, well, I already did that. I don't really care to do it again, you know. So, I mean, that's one reason I focus a lot on band development because it's it's a way for me to steer the ship rather than than letting labels or artists who are coming to me decide the direction that, uh, that I'm going to work, you know, the, the type of music that I want to work on. You have a lot of gray area between your producer's hat and your engineer's hat. What do, you, do you consider yourself more of an engineer or producer? Well, I have, I mean, I haven't really, I haven't engineered sessions in, uh, besides mixing. I mean, it's a well, mixing engineer. But yeah, let's, let's clarify there because there's mixing engineers, there's recording engineers. It used to be that it was, uh, it was all the same. It was the guy. Yeah. You, were in, you were in there yeah. the whole time. For that's three that's weeks, how I started. Know? I started yeah. in 19, the early 70s. You yeah. know, that was, that's what you did. But so, I mean, I, I, I mostly probably, you know, 65% of my time or so, I'm, I'm mix, I'm a work as a mixer. But there's a production element to that too, because I'm usually there might be arrangement ideas, that I, but you know, so depending on the artist, sometimes there's a, a lot more production ideas going in and as a mixing engineer. There's a lot of people who just agonize for a day and a half over just getting the drums right and stuff like that. And I know that you know we've talked about this before, where you like to get stuff done quickly and you you're very decisive about certain things uh, yes I mean I know I have friends who to spend a day two three days on a song and they're fantastic mixers and I have friends who Chris Algae who mixes as fast as I do Chris you know is, yeah Chris is another one like that but it's you know I mean it's whatever gets you to the end result I listen to a song and I just I forge ahead this is this is this is the way to to wherever I'm heading, you know, and and, and these are the sounds I'm going to put in. And but does that take a certain amount of discipline to just decide? Yeah, that's it. That's the way I'm going. I don't know if it's discipline, you know. I mean, because <laughs> I, I mean, I, I I mean, I have again, I have friends that I really respect who spend days on a mix. I listen to their mix and it's like, wow, you know, I, you know, I just have a, a different approach. I you know, I listen to a ref of the song and I just. I just start forging You just know where it's going to go. And you, and yeah. Most of, you know, a lot of, a, a bigger percentage of the time I've been right, not always, you know. You're also dependent on the quality of what you're getting, right? 
How much input do you have in the pre-production process? It varies artist by artist. You know, if some artists really want my input, you know, arrangement-wise and things like that, and some really want you to stay super close to what they've done. I remember one of my my first gigs in Los Angeles, Mourners asked me to come down and work with Lindsay Buckingham on a song, and they gave me way too much time to mix it. <laughs> so, I mean, like a couple days or something. By the end of the second day, I had, I had rearranged the whole song. I'd add, added extra parts. I'd done it. And it's like an hour before Lindy's going to get there. I'm just like, oh my God. What have I done? What right? the fuck have I done, <laughs> man? You know, can I try to kind of deconstruct this and go back? And it was kind of, but, you know, no, I mean, I'd made a commitment and I stuck with it. And Lindy came in and listened to it and loved it, you know? You have to kind of sometimes just take a chance. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't take me, I can really, really quickly completely change direction. Sometimes people think the chasm is really wide when it's actually just something you can step across, you know. And often you spend more time talking about it than you would if you just say, well, here, let me try something. I mean, that's one thing I always tell bands or artists that I'm working with. Let's just, you know, if you have an idea, if I have an idea, Let's just let's just listen to both. It's, it's I can do it really fast, you know. Let's hear it this way. Let's hear it that way. A lot of the time, it's super obvious, you know. It's like, oh well, yeah, 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 that's the way. <laughs> if not, all right, well, let's move on to something else, and we'll listen to that again in the morning. You know, let's move on to the rest of the song. We'll leave that one little question up till tomorrow, and I bet it'll be undeniably obvious tomorrow. A lot of musicians come to the recording process through the traditional path of we went and we worked in a studio, we were grunts or we were, you know, looking over the shoulder of engineers, other engineers, other producers and learning that way. You didn't go that path, right? You pretty much kind of figured it out for yourself? I don't know that that's the way I would, that I would necessarily recommend, but that's what I did. I didn't have access to a lot of people in the studio community there in San Francisco. And I didn't really want to try to go get a job as, you know, picking up sandwiches. So I, mm -hmm. I just started building my own studio. I'm sure I developed a lot of bad habits and I developed some habits that were my own in ways of routing and stuff. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, it was an interesting, you know, trial by fire just toss you in. And, here you go, you know? You know, I just, I recorded everything. I went out to see bands every night, and, mm -hmm. and you know, the, one of the best ways to promote yourself is word of mouth among musicians, you know? Hey, let's, you know, everybody's got their cassette of, you know, listen to what, you know, what we just recorded, and eventually, I, hopefully I got good enough that, you know, the name started, my name started to get around more. I mean, I. It was nerve-wracking, but it was, you know, it was fun. It's been, you know, that's, that's how I learned. I certainly respect the other way of going, starting in. Sure. And, you know, there's, as we know, there's no right way. Yeah. You know, there's whatever works for you. But at the same time, it's interesting because you, you kind of stumble into a lot of stuff when you don't know the rules, don't you? I mean, there really aren't any rules. I mean, who says you can't, like, I, people ask me in seminars, like, you know, you get a new comp a compressor, a new plug-in, what do you, you know, it's like, the first thing I do is I just turn everything all the way up or down, you know, like, what's this, thing? What, you know, what's this, if I, sure. let, let's find out where it's, what it sounds like when everything's a tin. You have to push or, it to the extremes to know what right. you can't do yeah, with it. Yeah, now you've got to back things down and, mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I, I don't really, I, I don't think there really are any rules. I mean, I learned so much from artists who bring me, I, you know, the, recordings that I get from artists where they, they have these sounds going that's like, oh my God, like, how did you even do that? I mean, it's so wrong, but it sounds cool in the track. That's great, you know? Like, what do you wish somebody had told you before you started out? Boy, I don't know. I've, I, I wouldn't even know how to answer that. I mean, I mean part, of the, part of the fun of doing this has just been the process over the past 50 years of... The journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting because you know when we're when we're younger, we're more fixated on the destination. But I think, I think you're right. I think the journey is really, I mean, 
Yeah, and I guess, I mean, I never even, I don't know if I would have even known what the destination was, what the destination was going to be. I mean, this is just what I was doing. I didn't necessarily have, I want to have a big wall of platinum records. Or, you know, I, you know, I just wanted to make, you know, help put together some great records. And, you know, I'm still here 50 years later almost. You seem to have done know? a pretty good job of it so far. Yeah. Well, I've had fun, you know, I mean. I've had a great time. So. Isn't that what it's about? You know, it's been a, it's been an interesting ride. I mean, there's certainly been ups <laughs> and downs, but you know, but again, I'm just still here. You know, and trying to, I know, always trying to find new ways to do stuff and keep it interesting, not get stagnant. You know, that's the other yeah. thing that I always worry about. I don't want to just get stuck in repeat. You yeah, know? you seem to be doing enough diversity to not endanger yourself of that either, which is kind of cool. Hopefully, you know. Yeah. Mark Needham, thank you for being my guest. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for coming over. It's been a pleasure. All right.